This is the first calculator video on graphing quadratic functions. Um, the first thing you should do with your calculator, obviously, is turn it on and make sure your battery is charged. Uh, if it's not, just charge it uh, for a little bit. should have enough for last for an hour or so. But you really should charge it overnight or once every week, once every two weeks overnight to make sure you have charge all the time. That said, press the home button to go to your main screen. On the left here with the keypad, you'll see that the last button that I pressed will always be highlighted in red. Um, now, if we look at the options we have on this main screen, and I use the down arrow to select these, or if I use the mouse pad to drag the cursor around, um, what I'm going to do is add a graph to a new document. Uh, the documents menu on the right here is another way to do this. So I want to show you kind of the two, two ways we can start a graph, um, not in the scratch pad, but just to add a new document. If I press the one key that's going to go to a new document and it, it, it asks us which type do we want to add. And we can press 2 to add a graph or just click on the option to add a graph. Um, I can also press the home key and go back to the graph button down here. Hover and press a graph and it just added a second graph. Um, doesn't matter which screen we're in right now. At the top you'll see the tabs. These represent two different graph pages that we have. Um, again, it doesn't matter right now which of the two that you're on. So once we have a graph selected, uh, we see a coordinate plane with an xy axis. You'll see some numbers appear, um, mostly if you kind of click and free some space, and you can click anywhere on the grid, you'll see the numbers that represent your window. Um, going from the right to left, you can see the x-axis from negative 10 to positive 10 and the y-axis bottom to top from negative 6.67 to positive 6.67. Uh, if the tab with the f of x ever disappears, we can press tab to bring it back. Uh, now we see our first function entry line to type in a function. Remember, f of x acts like y, so this is also saying y equals. We're going to go ahead and graph y is equal to x squared, the graph that you saw on our base window. This is what we refer to as a base graph. Um, for all the different quadratic functions that we're going to do. There are going to be variations of this. Um, so let's go back to the grid. We're going to type in x. The x key is at the bottom of your calculator, and then squared. Uh, squared is left of the 4. You have other exponents to the left of the x squared, but since x squared is or the square button is so commonly used, they put it as its own button. Um, and then I'm going to press enter, and you can see the, gra the graph is graphed. Um, as well as the equation appears next to it. Um, we may want to change the window, and there are several ways to do this. Pick your favorite. The first way I'm going to show you is the classic way, uh, left over from the TI-84, our old calculator. If I press the menu button, you'll see a context-based menu appear uh, with several different options. These may or may not be very similar to what you see here, depending on the operating system that you're using. Um, but we can update everyone's operating systems to get back onto the same one. Uh, but that shouldn't matter for this. What we want to do is select the option for window zoom. And if I select that option, you'll see another one open up. Now realize you can select the option by three ways. You can use the up down arrows to kind of pull that left up and down. Uh, you can also use the mouse, the keypad is a mouse, or you can just press the button four. And then we're going to go up to window settings up here. So menu four one to get to win window settings. This is the manual entry uh, to change the max and the min values of the different axes. Uh, what we can do is enter some new values. So I'm going to hit cancel and kind of take a look at some things that I might be able to lob off here. Um, I could say, well, I definitely could make my x min a little bit smaller than it is, my x max a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go back to menu, uh, then I'm going to go to window, and then I'm going to go to window settings. I'm going to change my x min maybe to a negative 4 and my x max to a positive 4. My x scale is what the tick marks are by, and auto is a good place to leave this. This is a great feature that this calculator has. It'll just sort of automatically put them wherever it feels like it should, um, but mostly we don't really worry too much about them on the graph. It just lets us know where the tick marks are. So this widened it out a bit, and we can see a little bit more of the, the curvature uh, of the graph. Um, so I changed the x from negative 4 to 4. Now I'm going to show you the second way. Um, if we move the cursor up and over to any of these four numbers that you see on the axes, we're going to move it up there, and we're going to double-click 
Now, how do you double click? You click in the center of your, uh, your keypad once you've moved the cursor up. So I'm going to double click and basically now I'm going to type in my new value directly on the screen. So maybe I want to see more um, vertically. So I'm going to change this to a 10. Then I can tab. Uh, before pressing enter or anything, I can actually hit tab and it tabs over to the right. And I can change, well maybe I don't want to change that four just yet. So I'm going to keep that and I'm going to tab. Now I'm at the bottom where it says negative 6.67. Maybe I want to change that to a negative 2. Maybe I don't need to see so much of the y-axis down there. Then I'm going to tab. And then I don't want to change the negative 4. So I'm going to leave that. And then I'll tab again. And I could keep tabbing around the entire graph. Um, now, you'll notice as I press the tab, there's a little hesitation. It's actually a double tab um, to kind of move it to the next one. So double tap the tab, and you'll keep cycling around the graph. So that's kind of a neat thing of the new calculator as well, this ability to change the axes or change the, the window without leaving the graph. I'm going to stop there um, and create a new video for the next part, which would be finding the zeros.